Thanks for coming. It's good to have you oh, here. It's good to be back, man. What a raucous audience. They are. They're a little. Well, there was a baby out here earlier, and it was. Uh, it got people baby. really fired up. Yeah. 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 Do you think? Are you a football fan? A big I NFL am. fan? I am, and I'm originally from a small town in New England. And so, are the Patriots your team? Uh, yes, but not by geography. I like them because they win a lot. Oh, really? <laughs> so you're just admitting to being a bandwagon fan? Oh, yeah, yeah. As soon as they start losing, I won't be a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it seems like they just started that, yeah. Well, they, yeah, but they did but have a never decent know. regular season. That is you true, know, it's, yes. It's weird where everybody in New England is saying the sky is falling when they won 12 games in the division. And well, you get spoiled, I think, They after are so a while. spoiled. If that yeah. ever happened in Cleveland, mm. the streets would be on fire. I know. <laughs> like, it would, be a, it would be a riot. It is a funny balance. There's weird. And Boston also, they win, you know, the Red Sox. Away. It's like they have too much winning there. Yeah, they went through a series where they were, like, lovable losers. And now it is. The tables have turned. Now so they've become they hateable winners. They have. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather be a lovable loser, I think, ultimately. Yeah. <laughs> you, are you in, right now, are you in wrestling mode or movie mode, or is there a difference between you know, the two? That's a great question. Uh, Thank uh, you. Right now, I'm, I'm smack dab in the middle of filming the newest installment of Suicide Squad. So movie mode. So full, full, full movie mode. Yes. yes. And I, you work out, right? I'm a, I, I'm, yeah. It's one of my New Year's resolutions. I'm thinking of <laughs> Do you work out harder when you're wrestling or when you're doing a movie? Uh, the days are actually longer in a movie, so believe it or not, even though the touring schedule is grueling for WWE, I actually have more time to work out. More time so to work out. I'm in movie mode, yet I'm working out less. And do you work out harder for one than the other, or do you, is it pretty much the same workout all the time? It's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Yeah. You do it with other people? Other people are around, but I scare them away with all the grunts and noises. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would be very intimidated to work out with you. Do so people come up to you? Did they come up to you and they'll go, hey, we should work out together? Do no, you I try to scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Key on equipment like a dog marking its territory. <laughs> and would you consider yourself now to be, because I think when we met, you, I thought of you as a wrestler, and now I think of you much but more. But Jimmy, we met such a long time An ago. actor than a wrestler. Ooh, wow. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'd like just to be a dude, just a guy, just trying to ride that ride of life and have fun well, doing it. Well, you're going to need to work out less if you just want to be a, just a dude. All right. I can help you with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, uh, well, now certainly these are tremendous opportunities, you know, to be a part of a movie like Doolittle and then to be in the upcoming uh, Fast 9, the newest installment of the Fast Saga, and then certainly to be filming Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Squad. These are great opportunities that I really want to pursue and I have passion for, so right now I'm doing more acting. Are so you you're playing, correct. You're playing Peacemaker, the character? I in... can't confirm or deny you can't anything say. about Suicide Squad. I can, invo I can tell you that I'm right in the middle of filming it. Uh-huh, that's all you can say. <laughs> The DC people are always the, watching. Yeah, the, uh, the internet seems to think you're playing either Peacemaker or if there's a typo, Pacemaker, which is I a... I do believe that the internet has also pronounced me dead on seven or eight occasions. I see. <laughs> Not everything you, you see is true. <laughs> but every, eventually, they're going to pronounce you dead, and, and they they're going to be, be right. right. Yeah, like exactly. That's one they're going to win. They're definitely going to win that one. Yeah. That prediction will sadly come true someday. Okay, so you're filming this movie. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy Kimmel, for giving me that moment to face and my mortality. I want you to appreciate. <laughs> Damn it! I appreciate just gonna... being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I try to uplift the guests here on the show. <laughs> so at this point in your career, you are you doing a. When was the last time you wrestled? Uh, well, it's been a. This is the first time in 15 years, or maybe even more, that I haven't been on a WWE scheduled pay per view in a calendar year. So oh. this is the first big transition. You spoke a lot about like Tom Brady moving elsewhere. This is. I've officially. Moved out. I'm not a regular player. You're I, not a regular player. No, I, I'm, I'm WWE still my heart I'm still a part of the family. I still keep in touch with a lot of folks I try to do my best to teach and mentor and help where I can but man, I'm 42. I'm getting on to be 40. How old is Tom Brady? Tom Brady, he's right about your age. Yeah, he needs to get out. Yeah, he needs to get out like he's still walking. <laughs> Why is that guy still playing football? Like, no, I'm I, I uh, I've really I've been proud of the effort I've put forth and I just want to make sure that I never I'm in a position where paying customers like yourself look at the effort and go like, nah, he's just kind of sticking around because he's greedy. I see. I, yeah. But do you, like, if you were to want, do you go like, oh, hey, I always want to be a part of it. I want to do something. Do they call you? Do you call them? No, so a lot of, uh, it, it works different for everybody. I always like for them to give me ideas and then me kind of make it my own. I see. So, uh, I, I know that we have a, a small, large event called WrestleMania around the corner. It just so huh. happens to be in Tampa. That's kind of where I live. So right. I'll be in the neighborhood. And I Suicide see. Suicide Squad should be done. I see. 
but it's not like it's not like I call someone up and be like, I want to be in WrestleMania. Those spots are very coveted. There are performers that work all year, 250 shows a year to earn those spots. And you want to take one of those? I would love to, to earn one of those. <laughs> and the way you do that is by Vince McMahon, the head of creative, calling uh -huh. me up and be like, hey, pal, I'd like you to do this. Uh huh. And then I say, yes, sir. And then I kind of put my own spin on it. You so, still think of him as your boss? You still think in those he terms? Is, he is. Uh, so much more than that to me. He is a friend, a father figure, a mentor, uh, a trusting resource. He's filled with wisdom. But above all else, yes, I still think of him as my boss. You do, yeah. yeah. It's a funny thing, isn't it? No matter how like old you get and how much you accomplish, those people who were your boss, you still keep them in that, you hold well, them in that regard. He's also had a tremendous effect on my life. That's a, I mean, that's a couch session for you and I. I'm probably gonna have to pay you a therapist fee for that. But he's, a, he's, had a, he's really had a tremendous impact on my life. He has, wow, you really are very fond of him. Well, you know, I've had to look at all my relationships. Like kind of like a weirdo Recent, to me, well, a little, right? <laughs> Right? We're all kind of weird, right? <laughs> We're all kind of into some weird stuff. You're right. You're you know, right. I've, I've had to look at my relationships really closely recently because you forced me to face my mortality. <laughs> so in the last four minutes, you've done some real soul really searching. Have, I've looked within. I really have. Yeah. What did you do for the holidays? Uh, I actually, for the first time in, in two decades, I got to, to spend uh, some time with the family that uh, I love. So it was And really did you feel like, oh, I'll want to do this again? Or I did. did. You I did. did. Yeah. And that's like the first time I felt that urge. Normally, we do an event every 26th of December in Madison Square Garden. Right. And the 25th, I'm like, all right, let's get out the door with Santa, because I uh -huh. want to get to the garden. And this year, I had a, an extended stay with uh, intimate family, and it was it was just really special, man. Did they about... try to come up with presents for you? And oh, our... we had to, we yeah. had, I had to dead that a long time ago. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the gift-giving thing I am not a fan of, because oh. people, uh, they're, my family, I have four brothers. They have families of their own. I think the resources should go to the kids. And instead, we got into a contest of like trying to outgift each other and people wasting money on things that none of us will use. What's the worst gift you got from the family? So, that's a great question. Jimmy. Okay, uh, we made a pact: no gifts. If okay. you're gonna do something, do it for the kids and say it's from you and like give them a little bit of extra because they're the ones who enjoy the gifts of Christmas. My dad tried to break the pact. Uh huh. Because you are his kid, and he probably thinks mm -hmm. of it that well, way. Well, yeah. you may have a point there. <laughs> let, me, let me use these affidavits. <laughs> but anyway, he broke the pact, and he got me a gift, which he thought was so very special. It is a ceramic wine bottle holder that is two revolvers, <laughs> and it's <laughs> classy. You I, know, I don't yeah. live in like a Western ranch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't live in a saloon. <laughs> Where did he get this? I, I don't know. I don't know. Did you tell him you liked it? or No, did you... no. I told him I hated it. <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to destroy it, one, because he violated our kind of agreement of trust. Like not So like he wanted to give that gift to be like, I gave a gift. Merry Christmas. And uh -huh. like, he did a good thing, but he did a bad thing by violating the pact. He really went 0 for 2 on and that one. And he got yeah. me a really cruddy gift. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's, I'm glad, actually, I'm, no, of course, I'm sorry for this terrible tragedy, but I am <laughs> glad you said this because what, what we've done tonight is we polled our studio audience and we asked them, what's the worst gift you got for Christmas and will you bring it in? We had some studio audience members here last Why night. Why didn't you tell me beforehand? I would have brought the, the two revivals. I only, I, you know, I wish we were that prepared. Because I would have just destroyed it. What we... Well, that's exactly what we're going to ask you to do. No. We come back. We're going to meet these people. We're going to see their gifts, and then hopefully, if you're inclined, you will destroy them. John all, Cena. All I'll see is my dad's face. He'll <laughs> rest. <laughs> John Cena is here. Doolittle opens a week from Friday. We'll be right back. Ah. Don't be alarmed. People only say that when they're about to be alarming. Oh, sorry about this. And sorry about that. <clears throat> all right. I'm unavailable. Ah! Unavailable for the man who changed your life? I'm going to save the queen, bro. I am not your bro. You should be an Eskimo's rug by now. Out, Claus. Ow! Beat, Claus. Beat! Uh, oh, you've gained weight. That is John Cena in Doolittle, uh, which is... Uh, it's on January 17th. Yeah, January 17th. Yeah. Well, boy, it seems like such a waste to be in this kind of shape and to do voiceover work. It really does. <laughs> All right, let's let's put some hustle behind this muscle. <laughs> now you've got a hammer in your hand. I call it the compensator. Oh, the compensator! I'm truly I like a that. Ken doll. <laughs> this hammer, this sledgehammer, this old time, <laughs> this old timey <laughs> sledgehammer is uh, it is designed specifically to help some people who are in our studio audience say goodbye to some unwanted holiday gifts. These are real gifts. So yep. step forward here. Now, what is your name? Marisha. Marisha, where are you from? 
Tucson. Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. What is this gift? Um, this is a pig bowl that my sister gave me. Mm -hmm. I asked for a classy serving bowl so I could serve my boss when I had him over. And oh. this is what she gave me. You, to serve your boss, and then this is the result of yes, that. And did is. you claim you liked it? Did you pretend? No, not really. And would you like John <laughs> Cena to destroy this? What do you think that thing cost? I don't know. 20 bucks, maybe? Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. That. <laughs> <laughs> would you care for John Cena to destroy this gift given to you by your sister? For you to destroy What did you get your sister? An autographed Neil Gaiman novel. You waited in line for the novel? No, I ordered it. Oh, you ordered it. <laughs> still, hey, still, still, <laughs> autographed. <laughs> it's signed by Neil Gaiman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, very good. And, well, let's take this, and we'll put this right on the stump. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. What? I gotta say something. Oh, okay. Lauren. Sister gave you a signed book from one of the greatest graphic novelists of our time, and you picked through the bargain bin at Big Lots! Shame! 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 And that's why this little piggy is going to hell! That's right! <laughs> Here we go. Good job! Well done. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Come on in. Wow, that was really, that was something. <laughs> you got a future in demolition. All right. Oh, oh, we, uh, I believe uh, we have a gift for you, actually. So here's a better gift. Uh huh. It's a John Cena action figure signed <laughs> by John Cena. Wow, there you go. Send that to your boss. All right, thank you so much. Hi there, what's your name? I'm Ali. Ali, Ali, nice to meet you. Now, what do you have, Ali? So I have these uh, Christmas tree ornament balls uh, given by my neighbor, new neighbor. And when I open them, I mm -hmm. find these glittery underwear inside. <laughs> now, the neighbor, is this a friend, the, the neighbor? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. okay. And um, uh, he, she? Uh, it is a family. Family. Yeah. And they decided to give you underpants. Underpants, glittery. Okay. Oh, <laughs> neighbor gave you a set of balls with underwear? <laughs> And you didn't want them? Yeah, I didn't want them. Mm -hmm. And you don't want them? No, I don't want them. Yeah. And maybe you'd like John to destroy them. I'd love to have that. Oh, that would be nice. What do you think, John? Uh-oh. Oh. Listen up, neighbor. <laughs> neighbors don't give neighbors underpants, you psychopath! <laughs> And I'll have you know, Ali doesn't even wear boxers. He goes commando, just like his hero, John Cena. All right, go get it, John. <laughs> Goodbye, underpants! And I believe we have a special gift for you as well, Guillermo. Look John. at that. Here's a great gift. It's a John Cena Blitz Brawler doll, signed by John Cena. There you go, Hello. signed by John Cena. Hello. Thank you, Ollie, thank you very much. And finally, what is your name? My name's Omni. Omni, Omni, O-M-N-I, like the hotels. Yeah, just like the hotels. Oh, how about that? Well, and Omni, where are you from? I'm from Orange County. Orange County, and what did you get for Christmas and from whom? So I went to my holiday work party and a previous coworker said I'm gonna get $200 as our bonus. Sweet. We show up. I know. Wait, so that's what they usually give? Yeah, that's what they usually get. Okay. So all of us went inside, we had lunch, everything ended, and then and you got this. Like everyone got the justice. Nobody got $200? No one. Wow, and how did you feel about that? I kind of just said, ah, and then left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you still working there? Yeah. You are? Well, not for long. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> hey there, Omni's boss. They say that it's the thought that counts, but your thought sucks big time! Omni was expecting a Christmas bonus, not Frosty the No Man. <laughs> you cheap son of a bitch! <laughs> Do you want me to kill a snowman? All right, maybe I'll put it down like that. Let's get behind the sneeze guard. Here we go. And. Oh my goodness! It's leaking. <laughs> well, we must have a gift, a special gift for Omni we here. We sure do, Jimmy. What do we have, John? Two $100 bills signed by John Cena. Wow. Look at that. There you go. Happy 
in here. <laughs> Doolittle opens in theaters a week from Friday. John Cena, everybody. We'll be right back with Drew Paul. I am Jimmy Kimmel. Give back this holiday season by my new book, The Serious Goose. I wrote it and illustrated it. All the money I make goes to children's hospitals across the country. So, um, you know what to do.